welcome to Main Street America's Small Business Digital Training Trainer Session. Main Street America is helping small business owners gain new skills through a team of digital marketing experts who provide free training to small business owners across the country. Today's session will be Learn the Basics of Google Calendar. So, what is Google Calendar? Google Calendar is an online calendar that can keep track of everything you need to remember and do. It comes as part of a free Google account. If you have a Gmail account already, you also have a Google Calendar account. Have you ever written down your appointments in a planner? Google serves as a digital version of that. You can use it to schedule appointments, create reminders for yourself and others, invite people to meetings, and much more. Like a paper planner, it will keep you organized, on time, and on schedule. Unlike a paper planner, Google Calendar can be accessed from any device with internet access. You can easily change or delete information from any device you use, and will see the most up-to-date version of your calendar no matter where you view it. You can make an appointment on your home computer, adjust the time on a computer at the library, and then get a reminder for that appointment on your phone. Pretty cool. Google Calendar also allows you to digitally share your calendar with anyone. So let's get started. To get access to your calendar, first we need you to sign into your Google account. Signing in is a bit like unlocking the door to your home. It's a process that makes sure that only you can access your account. Open a new tab in the browser window and go to google.com. If you're not signed in, click sign in, enter your username, then your password. This slide shows the Google account sign in page, which displays your email address and a field that says enter your password and then the button marked next. Now we'll gain access to your Google Calendar. Once you've signed into the Google account, click on the Google Apps menu icon. This is located in the upper right side of your screen. This menu will show you a list of your Google Apps. Scroll down until you find Google Calendar. Select Google Calendar. This slide is going to show you the Google Apps menu icon circled, the menu opened, and the icon for Google Calendar. So let's take a look at your calendar. This is the main section where you'll see the events that you've added. There are a few different ways to view this section and we'll go into more detail soon. There's a mini view of the full month on the left side of your screen. You can use this to quickly jump to different dates. Below, there's a search bar that you can use to find specific people who might be invited to events. Underneath that, you'll see My Calendars, a list of calendars that you have access to. When the checkbox next to any of them is selected, you'll be able to see the events in that category. The Create button will allow you to create a new event to place on your calendar. You'll be the only person who can see what you put on your calendar unless you choose to let other people see your events. Calendar view allows you to see your schedule in different increments of time. First, you'll open the menu in the upper right side. By default, the calendar is set to week-long increments, so the word week will be displayed. You can also view day, month, year, schedule, or four days. To change the view, open the menu in the right upper side and select the increment of time you would like to see. Let's take a few moments to change your calendar view. Open the menu. By default, it should say week, but it might also be a different increment of time. Click on at least three different increments of time. For example, day, then month, then four days. Then select schedule. And if you don't have any events on your calendar, your schedule will be empty except for the holidays. Next, you're going to learn to create an event. An event can be anything that you need to schedule. 
a word meeting, a get together with friends, even a reminder to water your plants. You can use your calendar to create a reminder of something you need to do or create a task so you can tackle your to-do list. In this section, you will create a calendar event for an imaginary meeting. If you have a real meeting you want to create, you can do that as well. For this example, we will call it team meeting. On this screen, you'll select create in the upper left corner and then select the words add title and type in the name of your event. Now, add the date, time, and description for your event. Start with the date. Click on the display date to reveal a mini calendar. On the mini calendar, click the day when your event will take place. Then click on time and type in the start time and the end time for your event. If your event will be all day, like a vacation, you can select the box next to all day. Now, click on description and type in a short description of your event. You can be as brief or detailed as you would like to be. If you know the location where this event will take place, click on location and type that in. Now, it's your turn. Create your first event. This doesn't have to be an actual event. You can make up one or use an upcoming appointment, meeting, or something that you have planned. First, click Create in the upper left corner, and once the menu opens, type in the title of your event. Next, click on the date and time in the inf and the information for your event. Finally, type in the description for your event and select save to save the event. Now we're gonna invite your guest. Some events you schedule will be just for you. For example, you might create an event reminding you to take a walk, take out the trash, etc. But most events such as meetings, dates, and appointments involve more than one person. In this section, you'll learn to invite guests to attend your event. When you invite a guest to your event, they will receive an invitation. If they have a Google account, the event will automatically appear in their Google Calendar. To invite guests to your event, click on the words Add Guest and type in the email addresses of the people you want to invite. After you type in each email address, press Enter on your keyboard. If it's an email you've contacted before, your guest's Gmail profile may pop up as a suggestion and you can select it. The people you invite to your event will receive an email invitation letting them know about the event, even if they don't have a Gmail account. Everyone you invite can let you know if they're going to attend by selecting yes, no, or maybe on the invitation. If you want your guests to be able to change the time and date of an event, select Guest Permissions below the list of your guests. This will open up a menu where you can select how much access your guests can have to change or add to your event. Select the Modify Event box, which will allow your guests to change the time of the event to a more convenient time for them. If your guests modify the event, they'll have the option of sending you an email letting you know about the new time. The new time of the event will automatically show on your calendar. Once you finish making changes, select Save. Now, it's your turn. Invite one or more guests to your meeting. First, type an email address into the Add Guest text box and then press Enter. Now, you can let your guests modify the event. To do this, click on Guest Permissions. Then, click on Modify Event and click the Save button to save this step.
Now we're going to add video conferencing. Video conferencing allows you to have conversations online with people while seeing their faces and hearing their voices. Google's video conferencing platform called Google Meet, and it's designed to work seamlessly with Google Calendar. When you create an event in Google Calendar, you have the option to add Google Meet to each event. When you choose to add video conferencing, your event invitation will include a link that all your attendees have to do is select and use Google Meet. To add the conferencing from your open event, click Add Google Meet Video Conferencing. The Add Google Meet Video Conferencing button will change to say, Join with Google Meet. A meeting code will also appear below the button. When it's time to start your video conference, everyone can join by selecting that. Even if your meeting attendees don't have a Google account, they can join Google Meet using the link that they were emailed when you were invited them to the meeting. People who do not have Google accounts will need to request access from the meeting host before they can join. Now it's your turn to add video conferencing to your event. From your event menu, click Add Google Meet Video Conferencing. Sometimes you need to send a document or another file to the people who are attending your meeting. This can be an article that you want your meeting attendees to read, a document to review, or an agenda that you all can go through together, or that you may want them to review prior to the meeting. You can distribute a file to your meeting attendees by adding an attachment to your Google Calendar event. To do this, click Add Description or Attachments. A menu will open allowing you to choose to add a description or attachment. For this purpose, we're going to click Add Attachment. A window will open prompting you to attach a recent file, a file from your Google Drive, a file that was shared with you, or a file uploaded from your device. You can also type something into the search bar to help you find that file. Now it's your turn. Add an attachment to your event. You'll select Add Description or Attachments, click Add Attachment, and then select a document to add. Privacy Settings. There are a few other settings in Google Calendar that allow you to customize your experience and ensure your privacy. In this section, we'll talk about notification and privacy settings in Google Calendar. So let's talk about who can see your events. Your calendar events will be automatically private until you share them. When you make an event public, the people you share your calendar with will see the details on your calendar. If the event is private, only you can see what's written on the event. Your calendar will be visibly blocked off during the time of the event, but your event details will not be visible. If you're working on a specific project, you can make the meetings for that project public. People you've shared your calendar with will see the meeting details. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have a doctor's appointment or another personal obligation that you want to put on your calendar, you can keep that information private. Your coworkers will know that you are not free to meet at that time, but they won't have any other information. To change the privacy setting on an event, click a menu that says default, default visibility, and then select public or private. Now it's your turn. Set your meeting to private. Double click your event to open the edit menu. Oh, sorry. Click on default visibility and then select private. Now, let's look at how you can share that calendar you just created with other people. There are lots of good reasons to share a calendar. You might create a time off calendar to share with your team at work. 
That's a great way to easily keep your team up to date about when different people will be out of the office. You could also create a, ca a share calendar for your family and include family events like family dinners or times when various, various family members have obligations. This can be really helpful for planning purposes, especially if you have kids playing sports. Another great use for a shared calendar is for a team working on a project to use calendar events to mark their due dates. Once your calendar has been created, open up the settings me meeting menu by hovering your cursor over the new calendar in My Calendars. You'll see three vertical dots appear. Click them to open your options menu. Then click settings and share. Once you're in the settings and share menu, scroll down to make decisions about your shared calendar. Check to make available to the public box to make it so anyone in your network can find your calendar or you can share your calendar with specific people. To do that, click Add People. You can invite everyone you want to have access to the shared calendar. This can be your coworkers, your family, or a group of friends. A window will pop up where you can type in their email addresses and select what level of access they have. See only free or busy keeps them from seeing the details of the event, just the fact that the person isn't available. See all event details lets them see all the event information that the person has entered about the event. Make changes to events allows the person to make changes to the other person's events. And make changes and manage sharing allows the person to make changes and decide who else in the group can see. So think through this carefully when you're um, identifying who the person is and what access they have. Now, we're back to that imaginary team time, time off calendar. Let's imagine that one of the team members got moved to a different department, so they no longer need access to your time off calendar. They'll need to be removed. Here's how to remove someone from a shared calendar. In the calendar set, setting menu, scroll down to share with specific people section. Click on the X next to the name and email of the person you want to delete. Now it's your turn. Share your calendar with at least one other person. To do this, you'll need the person's email address. Open the settings menu. Click Add People, type in the person's email address, and select permissions for that person. So I know this was a very quick crash course in Google Calendar. Should you have questions or need personalized help for your business, you can use the QR code or website below to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our four digital trainers. We look forward to seeing you in some of our other sessions. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much for attending today. And we look forward to seeing you in the future.